My name is Nate Young, and I'm one of the elders here at Two Cities, and this is my good buddy, Justin Mormon. He's the student director here. Um, today, we are going to just take a few minutes and dive into um, the idea of bearing one another's burdens in Galatians 6, 1 and 2, kind of zooming in a little bit on something Kyle talked about this past weekend. So let me just read that for us. Galatians 6, 1 and 2. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Um, we're commanded to do this, to bear one another's burdens. Mm -hmm. And um, just for our time here today, it's, I think it's helpful to create a definition of the word burden. And um, a good definition would be anything that steals a Christian's joy, anything that threatens to steal Christian joy would be a burden to the Christian. And we see in verse one that transgression, sin, certainly steals Christian joy as a burden. But there's also, you know, just real world tragedies, um, things that make us doubt the goodness of God, uh, just circumstantial things. And so Justin, why don't you just talk to us a little bit about those? Sure, you know, I, I think it's pretty obvious a little bit more right now because of the last 13, 14 weeks we've been in where life has been disrupted in several different ways. But even before then, or in the midst of this, I think just a, a couple of quick examples are, anytime our, our finances are probably messed around with, it's like, uh, what are we gonna do? We have sure. to provide. And so in those moments, um, just thinking about the last several months, I've seen where within our church where people have lost their job and there's just kind of obviously been this moment of what, what's next. And we've just seen how church community groups have come around and been like, hey, we're gonna take care of you for the next two or three months. Um, and sometimes those were just strangers in our church being like, who needs help? How can we help? Yeah. You know, so there, that was a specific burden. I think sometimes it's, um, there's sickness. You know, there's, there's people, whether it's something loud like cancer or something just that just still knocks someone out for a short, mid, long period of time. Again, we have fellow people in our community groups or the church in and of itself where it's like, hey, how can we help you? Yeah. It, practical things around the house. Let us help carry those burdens of your, your yard care. Or can we help transport your children? Can we help bring you groceries? I mean, there's so many things that we're yeah. getting to see where those very practical burdens, um, emotional burdens of just people showing up for one another. Right. Um, we're seeing those. Uh, I think back to that first part of that scripture, the transgressions. Those are the ones that often we aren't too excited about right. shouldering next to to people, particularly if we've never done that before. Right. But I think when it's people that have either been on the receiving end of that, um, that they've gotten to feel the joy of what, wow, they're walking with me through this. You can't help but want to also be in the heart preparedness of if someone else ever goes to this, I'm gonna be there for them. So go ahead and talk about those things, man. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, you're, you're right. I mean, that doesn't feel good to me when initially when someone approaches me and says, hey, Nate, what's going on here? And is asking a line of questioning that leads me to an area of sin that I'm caught in. Um, but the scripture says that we are, you know, commanded to do this. Yeah. Um, we're commanded to, because the big idea here is that we want to see Christ formed in one another. And, and how do we do that? Well, we, we need to live a life worthy of the calling to which we've been called. Um, we need to be blameless as Christ was blameless by, you know, grace over all that. But with God's grace and help, you know, we need to pursue that mm -hmm. with one another and we do that in community. And um, the reality is, like you said, that is a difficult thing to engage, right? Um, you see something in my life, it, it smells a little weird. Um, you know, maybe why did, why is he hanging out with that person so much, um, even though he's married? Or why is, you know, just any number of things that you yeah. can notice in somebody's life. Yeah. Um, that next drink at this event that we were at, they started acting a little bit different than they had been right. acting. Um, is that my place to step in with that person? Um, the reality is that's hard. It takes a lot of Christian wisdom. It takes what we talked about a couple weeks ago, being led by the spirit to know when and how to do those things. Um, but I think very practically for us as a church and as kind of a one size fits all, um, I would recommend to everybody that we take our next step towards DNA groups. Yeah. That is the way that, honestly, I as an elder of this church know how to operationalize this command for a church <laughs> of over a thousand people, yeah. right? And, you know, just very briefly, for those of you who are not familiar with DNA groups, they're, they're two cities versions of discipleship relationships. You know, three or four or five men or three or four or five women that are getting together for the purpose of seeing Christ formed in one another. Yeah. Um, 
there's a lot of things true about healthy DNA groups, but in regards to being able to talk about sin and rooting sin out of each other's lives, I think there are a couple tenets that we should look for yeah. um, and, and try seek to put in our DNA groups. Mm -hmm. um, and one of them is this idea of, of opting in, right? By the very nature of a DNA group, we're getting together with, you know, for me, a couple brothers in the faith that hopefully, you know, we're like-minded in pursuing Jesus and we're opting into this conversation, this idea of, hey, I wanna be as much like Jesus as possible. I wanna see you be as much like Jesus as possible. And so if we see things in each other's lives, please ask me the questions right. that need to be asked and I'm gonna do that to you, is right. that okay? So then that awkward thing that we were talking about, we've already opted into this accountability. Right. Um, now we have life on life relationships where we're meeting regularly and we have invited each other to talk about that. Yeah. Um, you know, so imagine how beautiful that is. We're, we're a church full of people that have these types of relationships across the church, helping yeah. each other, bear yeah. each other's spiritual burdens to be more like Jesus. That could be a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, another thing, it, it talks about actually in verse three, the danger of pride. Uh, one of the things I think that we need to be careful about, it's, it's hard to talk about yeah. these things, but one of the commitments that I've made with my DNA group um, at the very beginning, kind of laid it as foundational work was, I, I'm not going to seek to impress you guys. I'm also not gonna to seek to be impressed by you guys. You know, we're kind of just all equal at the feet of the cross of Jesus Christ and we're trying as best as possible to pursue being like him. Right. Um, I think that's another marker. You know, th there's a lot, I think there's a lot of people maybe in the audience of this video, maybe, maybe some of y'all, um, are not in a DNA group or you're new to two cities and you don't even know what that would look like, I would encourage you to just take your next step, find some people around you um, who are, are kind of alongside running next to you, trying to be like Jesus and, and try to start a group. That might be your next step. Some of you guys are in a DNA group, but you're not having these types of conversa conversations regularly. Right. Um, and and I would just encourage you all to maybe hit the reset button a little bit and and, lead by example, say, hey, here's a couple areas that I need you to ask me questions, right. whether I'm opening up about it the night we get together or not. Right. Like, you have my permission. And hopefully that could set the reset button for right. some. Um, and you know, maybe there's a third group of people, there's probably more than this, but a third group of people that have had a type of a relationship like this with a group in the past, mm -hmm. maybe from college, a lot of times it's in college, it's been five or 10 years, you catch up with those friends, and these are good things, you catch up with the buddies, three, four times a year, yeah. but kind of randomly, and it's easy It's it's easy to hide out and maybe not reveal some things in those conversations, sure. yeah. so. No, I, I, I can speak to that, that's the bottom line. I think about 2009, um, I had kind of wrapped up my job. I was in the position to kind of have a little bit more freedom, trying to figure out what was next. Mm -hmm. About a year of my life there, and then when I, I, I got down here to Winston-Salem, where I was also trying to find a church here and just just kind of floating a little bit. Again, people who knew me and knew my character, uh, all of those close relationships that were kind of made up what was a DNA group in Lynchburg. Well, some of them, one of them was in Michigan, one was now in Ohio. And so when we talked a few times a year, it's like, hey, how are you doing? How's the change? I could answer them honestly through avoidance. Yeah. And by om omitting some of those truthful things I was kind of going to or allowing in my life, I was lying. Yeah. And so for that season, I can look back and be like, that's when I let certain sin into my life. That's when I got lazy. That's when I got apathetic. Because sure. I didn't have some of those relationships in my zip code right. having regular life with. And right. also that I had given permission to ask some of those questions. So I think, I think that's huge. That's something I can look back on and be like, um, and, and to encourage all of you guys, to challenge whoever is thinks they have great friendships here in town that are Christians or not, but whatever it is, they're just like, no, these are, these are good brothers and sisters in my life. I still think it's important to, like you said, push the reset button at times. And, and if you're not in one of those groups or you still have a lot of good friendships, but it's not discipleship based, then it's usually you're not in one of those groups because you know that if you enter into one of those groups, you're gonna have two choices, either to be honest or to lie. And you don't wanna lie, so I'm just gonna avoid. And I think that's where as a church, and, and I can look back on that experience of mine, I never want to go through a, a, a season of life where I don't have those men, or people around me to ask those questions just as a guardrail for my own heart. Right. And um, I'm just thankful for that. Yeah, something you said just made me think of this. So um, a, another reason that we might not be in a discipleship type relationship is because we think we're doing okay. Mm -hmm. And I had 
uh, a good friend from college who's a pastor now down in Gainesville, Florida. I asked him what his favorite Bible verse was one time. And he said his favorite Bible verse was 1 Corinthians 10, 12, which says, if you think you stand, be careful lest you fall. <laughs> which I was like, that is the yeah. most discouraging favorite Bible verse I have ever heard. So I would True. say, but um, I, th I think there's a lot of wisdom in that. Yes. If we're not in a DNA group because we think we're doing okay, yeah. be careful lest we fall. Right. How can we be careful? Well, just normal in the routines and rhythms of life, yeah. be meeting up with, asking questions to, talking about how to be more like Jesus. Yeah. And then when the little, you know, sprig of sin starts to pop out of the ground, we chop it off right. before it's a tree and we don't know what to right. do with it. So true, so true. Man, we hope you guys just enjoyed this conversation. Again, as we make our way through Galatians and uh, we will talk to you next time.